From being a barrister to investing in startups, Alpesh Patel wears many hats. He joins us today. Thank you for speaking with us, Alpesh. Let me begin by asking you, what do you look for when you're investing in a startup? I and the, and the UK government doesn't fund the enterprises. What we look to do is find the most innovative entrepreneurs, the great intellectual property, and the ability for them to become unicorns, become billion dollar companies. That's what we're after. Then we make the deals. So it's, it's the deals we provide. The deals either to access to capital and help them find that capital in the private sector or find the cornerstone customer. That's our role. At the moment, the startup world is booming. Do you think this will last? For as long as there's entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurial DNA keeps on being reproduced, I think we're going to be safe. I think what's really interesting is how much India has become a, a nation of entrepreneurs. You know, it's always looked globally for opportunities. That's why the Indian diaspora is all over the world. And UK has always been a home for Indians. Now that we've got entrepreneurs and Indians combining with the ease of doing business out of the UK, that's why we exist in the Global Entrepreneur Programme within UK Trade, and, UK Trade and Investment to find those entrepreneurs and help them become global companies as a result of their desire to be global entrepreneurs and our ability to make global businesses in Britain more than probably any other country in the world and for longer than any country in the world making global businesses. Globally, how would you compare Indian startups and how they're doing? Well, one of the great things about Indian startups is they're now thinking beyond just the Indian market. The Indian market is relatively small on a global scale. When we look at the UK, part of the EU, which is a $14 trillion market, that's about five Indias alone, five Indias. And it's great that Indians are looking to solve global problems through their businesses and as a result become global businesses. And I think if you're going to become a global business, you're going to be in the UK sooner or later. Every single major global company in the world has a base in the United Kingdom. So we want these startups because they need to be global on day one. Day 365 is way too late to look at the UK on day one from which to become global, use our ease of doing business, our infrastructure, our innovation centers, our ease of access to capital, our networks, our entrepreneurs, our mentors to grow and develop their businesses and become global players around the world. What would your mantra be for young startups to grow and evolve? I'd say go global, think global on day one, go global and look at which are the countries which have the longest track record of building global businesses. What are some of the complete no-nos that startups should look out for? The complete no-nos is to go into a market without the right person without the market research, without using free government resources. If you have something for free, you know there's a reason why when government ministers travel abroad, all the big companies, the Fortune 500, the FTSE 100 companies travel with them, is because they know government resources, open doors, give them free information, give them access to resource they otherwise wouldn't have. You want to be fully informed as a startup. To be fully informed, use our know-how at UK Trade and Investment, at the Global Entrepreneur Programme, to access that market to get the right strategy. That's a yes, yes to avoid all those no-nos. What makes a startup an ideal candidate for early investment, according to you? Traction. And traction is proof of concept. You know, it's, it's, you've got the customers, you've got people falling over themselves to invest in you. Basically, you have, a, you have a solution to a global problem. Very often, the mistake that startups make is that they have a solution looking for a problem. You know, and the problem doesn't exist. What you want to find is, find the problem and how you solve it and make sure it's a global problem. The fantastic thing about Indian startups is, five to 10 years ago, they were rightly really just so excited about the Indian market. They wanted to solve Indian problems and there's a lot of problems in India to be solved, to be absolutely sure. But it's only a two, two and a half trillion dollar market. Now, Indians have got a global vision. And the reason they've got that is because they, first of all, see Indians at the top of global organizations. So they see, well, why can't we be there? And of course we can as global Indian entrepreneurs. And the second thing is they see global Indian businesses ruling the world. I'm not just thinking about the CEO of Microsoft and I'm not just thinking about Tata. I'm thinking right across the board. So they say, well, my startup should be the next Microsoft. And that's what we're trying to get across to them. Hell yes, it should. So let's get you into a global market, which is the largest in the world, and get you access to where you need to be today. Thank you very much, Alpesh, for speaking to us. It was a pleasure. My pleasure.
been excellent. You know, you don't stay in a country for 10 years if you're not enjoying your stint. So initially I probably came with a two, three year outlook to India. Hive platform is the latest offering from Zolo Mobile's newest operating system, specially designed for Indian customers.